Have you been searching for the perfect potato salad with a wonderful balance of fresh herbs, creamy, crunchy, tangy amazingness? Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. This potato salad will be whipped up in a snap, so let's get started. First off, the potatoes. I'm using some smaller, delicious, creamy baby potatoes, but I didn't have enough. So I'm also using some big, tasty, like I think they're new potatoes, I don't know. You can let me know in the comments if you know what kind of potatoes they are. I had already lost the bag. Your goal here is to chop these into bite-sized-ish pieces that are uniform. You want the potatoes to boil at the same time so they're all evenly cooked. Give those potatoes a once over just to double check that you haven't missed any. There's like a giant chunk hanging around. And, oh, or you haven't missed like three giant potatoes and they're hanging around. Okay, these potatoes are all chopped up. So now it's time to toss them into a big pot. Get them in there. This is a big potato salad, but I love having it in the fridge because it's like perfect for snacking on and it goes with basically everything. I'm adding about two teaspoons of salt, and now we're gonna fill it up with water so the potatoes are covered by at least like two inches. All right, onto a burner, place it on a medium high heat, and we're gonna cook them until they're fork tender. Okay, so I have a confession. My potato salad has eggs in it. I have six eggs. They came to a boil under two inches of water in a small pot, and now they're just resting for 10 minutes. Time for the red onion. So red onion can have like a bite to it, just like every other onion. It's a little milder and a lot prettier, but might be a bit too much for you. So here's what you could do. You could use shallots instead. They can be kind of expensive and hard to come by though. So if that's the case, you're going to like take the bite away with a little bit of lemon juice. Thinly slice about a third of a cup of red onion Transfer that onion to a small-ish bowl and then just squeeze the juice of half a lemon, about two tablespoons on top. If you love lemon like I do, you can squeeze even more on. It'll marinate in there, it'll take away the bite and really just mellow things out and also add a delicious lemony flavor. Okay, there we go. You can toss it every once in a while just to see and make sure that's all getting coated in there. I'm setting this aside until the very end, so just let it hang out. 10 to 15 minutes later, through the steam, you will see that your potatoes are fork tender, or you'll feel it with your fork. And it's time to transfer them into a bowl after they've been drained and drizzle with about two tablespoons of vinegar. I'm using an apple cider vinegar, it's nice and mellow. It'll help bring out some of the flavor and just make them delicious. I'm gonna give it just a little toss and then set these aside to cool down a bit. They're very, very hot. In the meantime, let's deal with those eggs. I'm gonna fish them out. You know that copper conducts heat really well, so the handles are always hot as fire. <laughs> Let your eggs cool in some cold water for a while so you don't burn your fingers when you're peeling them and set aside. In the meantime, we can chop our apple up. My potato salad has apple in it. I think it adds a really nice bit of crispness and sweetness. It's really a perfect balance. One large apple, should be about a cup diced. I'm using a big, delicious Honeycrisp, my favorite. We actually planted some Honeycrisp apples, so I'd be very excited if the trees uh, had fruit this year, but it might be a bit early. Cut the flesh from the core. And then you can dice as you'd like. It could be slices or really whatever shape. I just want something that'll fit onto a spoon when it's all mixed together, so that's perfect for me. Thin, careful slices, and then some chops. That's about a cup, I can set that aside and move on to my celery. We're using two stalks of celery. You could use a little bit more, a little bit less. These are like on the smaller side. So just give the celery a thin chop. All right, two stalks of celery. We are ready to deal with those hot as fire apples. And by apples, I mean eggs. Look at that, peeling beautifully. Every time I have to peel eggs on camera, it's like the worst nightmare of just like falling apart and sticking. Apparently it's the fresher the egg, the harder to peel. If you're worried about any of those horrible little fragments of shell clinging to your egg, you can rinse it or just dunk it in the cold water that you are using. It'll release them immediately. 
One last bit of chopping is a quarter cup of freshly chopped dill and freshly chopped chives. Anyways, let's give it a little chop, smaller pieces. And if you wanna be a little bit more liberal, then you could use a third of a cup. I'm gonna set that aside into a bowl and then do the same thing for some dill. Ugh. I get so sad when I can't find dill at the market. It's like someone else came in and snatched it all up. Now we can mix up the dressing, okay. Into a medium bowl, we're adding a half cup of mayonnaise. Use a nice mayonnaise, although I haven't really come across like a bad mayonnaise, just FYI. And then a half cup of sour cream. This is gonna be so good. Use a nice Dijon mustard. It'll be really like peppery and piquant and just creamy and amazing and delicious. It makes a big difference considering you're only using two tablespoons. So that's one. I'm like half-heartedly measuring it out. Normally I'd just be like slopping it out. Two-ish tablespoons. Next we have a tablespoon of celery seeds. So there's one more ingredient I have here and you have two options. In this container, I have a cup of chopped sweet pickle. That could be any kind of sweet pickle, including the juice. So I chopped it up and then I filled it up with the remaining juice. You could definitely use relish if you like. I just like chopping it because it has kind of, it's a little firmer, it's not so like jelly-ish and um, you get like bigger pieces of it. So, so now we have like a delicious dressing slurry to cover our potatoes with. Everything's all done. It's time to get this together. So drizzle that dressing over your potatoes. Gently, this is a gentle moment. Gently toss the potatoes just to cover them with this dressing. You should have a larger bowl than this, but I can't find my mega bowl. I don't know where it is. Okay, so now I have my deflamed onions. So of this, I'm gonna add in about a third of a cup. Let's mix that in a bit. Now add your celery and apple and just break up the apple pieces if they need to be broken up. The last step is to use almost all of your herbs. You can reserve some for the very end for garnish and almost all of your eggs. Same deal. You might want to plop a few pieces on at the very end. Now gently, gently toss this. The very last step is to salt and pepper to taste. So have a little bite, sprinkle some salt, sprinkle some pepper on and you're ready to go. Now let's plate this up. This potato salad is bringing back all the memories, but it's also bringing a smile to my face because I love every single ingredient in here. There's nothing that's filler. It's all perfectly balanced. I can't wait for you to try this recipe. But first, it's my turn. Before I take a bite, if you like this video, check out my savory playlist, all my favorite savory recipes. And there's a ton in there too. It's not all baking people. Okay, time for a bite. Mmm, mmm, that's so good. Everything, everything, everything is amazing in this. Tooting my own horn left and right. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.